trying to trace the humerus tutor here and in this video we're having a talk about the functional component of a muscle and that is the merely sarcastic sarcomere. So let's talk big picture first. We've got a muscle and <laughs> I hope you're pumped about this video. Moving on and so yeah we've got a muscle and a muscle will have an origin where it originates and an insertion where it inserts and it works in such a way whereby the functional unit of the muscle which is the sarcomere we'll get to that in a second will contract and shorten and basically then the muscle shortens and it will pull the insertion towards the origin as its form of action i hope you're um enjoying the little speech bubbles on the screen anyway let's move on so then a muscle is made up of many many muscle fibers which is this next little diagram here and so in the muscle fiber we can already see these darker shapes throughout it and those are going to be the nuclei or nucleus for singular furthermore we can see that it's kind of in a banded pattern and so the dark bands are called the a bands and i remember that because a there's a letter a in dark and then the light bands are your light I bands, and same deal, the letter I appears in light, so that's just kind of how I remember it. And then that muscle fiber, the sarcolemma, unlabeled here, is actually what is holding all those myofibrils together. So the sarcolemma is the outer sheath, and the myofibrils are inside of it, and many myofibrils form one muscle fiber. Also not shown here, and it's important to remember that there are a dense population of mitochondria within the muscle fiber because this is a high energy unit. All right, so having a look at an individual myofibril, we have in dark green a thick filament, which is largely composed of the protein myosin. Remember that prefix myo refers to muscle. And then in light green, oh gosh, that is a terrible color to write in, in light green, we have a thin filament, which is largely composed of the protein actin. How would you describe a thin filament of a myofibril that is not behaving properly? It's actin up! Ha! Okay, yep, so moving right on from that. Now, looking down the bottom of the myofibril, we have the ends of one thick filament, and the region that forms is the A band. And then from the end of one thick filament to the end of a different thick filament, whereby that space does not contain any myosin, that'll be our light I band. Okay. And drawing down in dark blue, I hope you can see, okay, that is the Z disc. I kind of remember because it's zigzagging, so that'll be the Z shape. And the Z disc on one side and the Z disc on the other side. Okay. And then looking in the center, we have between one thin filament and the other thin filament, that'll be the H zone. And lastly, we're just going to draw a line right down the center there. I remember that's down the middle, so that'll be our M line. So these are just ways I remember the anatomy of a sarcomere. And a sarcomere, that functional unit, is the space or the structures in between one Z disc and the next. Okay, so we'll just... Label the Z-discs on either side. That's that zigzaggy structure on either side. The Z-disc on the left, and there we go, the Z-disc on the right. And in between that, that'll be our functional unit, the sarcomere. Once again, in the middle, M for middle, M for M line. And then we have our thick filament, okay? And that's that weird, funky-looking uh, strand in the middle there. That'll be our myosin and our thin filament in a purple and that looks more like a helical structure that is indeed thinner so we have a thin filament a thick filament composed of actin and myosin respectively and we also have a third filament that we need to know and that's our elastic filament which is composed of the protein titan and here also, again, we can label some regions. We have between the end of one thin filament to the end of the next thin filament in the center, you find the H zone. From the end of one thick filament to the end of the same thick filament, you will have the dark 
a band, that darker structure formed by or created by the myosin itself. Okay, and remember that I band was from the that's the light band, and so that'll be from one end of the thick filament to the other end of another thick filament where you won't find myosin in that region. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's have a closer look at some of these uh, individual filaments in a little bit more detail. Up the top, looking again at the sarcomere, we can label in the dark A band because in this band, it's dark because it contains the thick filament, which is composed of, well, largely of the myosin protein. And what we can see here is a blown up version of that uh, myosin protein. And we can notice that it's quite um, interesting in structure. And what we're actually looking at is quite a lot of myosin proteins um, put together to form that strand that is the thick filament. Now down the bottom we have an individual myosin protein so that what that's what that looks like and it's actually composed of two uh, heavy chains okay and then towards the other end of the heavy chain it's composed of two light chains and the light chains um, contain the heads of the myosin protein. Now, if we zoom in a little bit more, there are a couple important sites on these light chains or the heads. So here in blue, okay, we have the actin binding site, and that's um, in the name, whereby that is the exact spot on the myosin protein that, that the actin will bind onto. And in orange, we have the ATP binding site. Okay, so there are these are two important binding sites that will determine uh, the conformation of the light chains or the heads of the myosin subunit. Okay, and then now moving on to the thin filament, and that was largely composed of actin. We can see that on one side of the thin filament we find the Z disc, okay, um, and then the thin filament itself. Now the thin filament is actually made up of quite a few proteins. We've got mainly here actin, and you can see that actin is a double-stranded protein that kind of winds its way around itself to form a helical structure. And then if you look lower down into the more detailed um, diagram, actin is what forms the bulk of the thin filament. However, these little purple kind of uh, proteins there. That's actually the troponin complex, okay, and the strands that wrap around actin and join up the troponins, that's tropomyosin. And the troponin and tropomyosin can undergo conformational changes or um, shifts in position, and that's what determines whether it binds to uh, myosin or not. And here we have a schematic of the sarcomere in a relaxed state up the top and a contracted state down the bottom. And note how the thin and thick filaments don't actually contract themselves, rather it's the thick filaments pulling the thin filaments together and also noting how the elastic filament composed of titan has been shortened and that's how contraction happens via a process called excitation contraction coupling which I will cover in a future video. I hope the anatomy um, of the sarcomere which was the functional unit of a muscle makes sense and if you've got any questions of course feel free to drop them in um, and we'll see you next time.